Okay, um, so 447 uh, Collins Street is, uh, is uh, in Melbourne. Uh, it's bound by um, Collins Street and uh, Flinders Lane, William Street and uh, Market Street. Um, and uh, it's um, currently a hole in the ground uh, with four big cranes uh, in it. Um, today I'm going to talk about the mixed-use tower and a little bit about the form and why the form is the form, because that also informs why certain structural things are happening. Um, I'll talk about the Skybridge design brief, uh, the individual tower performance versus the link tower performance, uh, the influence of construction method methodology, uh, Skybridge design, and construction tolerance, all of which are important to uh, inform the final design for the tower. Um, so this is it. Um, as Phil said, uh, someone in the media called it the pants scraper. We, we like to call it Collins Arch. But um, the, uh, it's, it's, it's two towers with the West Tower on the right, um, comprising 50,000 square metres of office. Um, over 30-odd floors. Uh, the, uh, the East Tower um, has uh, the W Hotel, which is, which is a five-star hotel, um, 250 keys, um, and then the uh, apartments um, rise up from above those, uh, those functions and link through the uh, Sky Bridge. The Sky Bridge is uh, 10 storeys and, uh, and the towers are 15 metres apart. Uh, at uh, ground level, it was an important um, offering back to the city to provide 5,000 square metres of public realm. So the, the towers are quite open and there's uh, through connections in both directions to provide that sort of laneway thing that um, you, those from Melbourne know, know what it's about. Uh, and there's a 24 metre deep uh, basement under it with um, uh, all the uh, back of house and car parking. Um, the form, it's a concrete framed building as is mostly done in Melbourne unless you have interesting uh, projects like uh, Barry was talking about that require you to consider something else. But this is the economical solution generally in Melbourne. Um, as, as a starting point, we'll always consider steel, most consultants would. Um, so the uh, Western Tower is a uh, side core um, banded slab system. Uh, and that's the one on the top uh, of the screen. The uh, 500 deep band spanning 16 metres. Uh, the second, uh, the lower one is the, uh, is the Eastern Tower and it has a, uh, the Resi Core um, is to the, Resi Core is to the north and that's the Hotu Core which drops off at level 16. Um, then when the, uh, when the towers join together, this is basically the uh, Skybridge level that uh, repeats uh, and reduces uh, as you go up the building. Um, some of the interesting features are that there's uh, the south end of both of the towers uh, recede, uh, or terrace um, up from around level 16. That's to stop overshadowing uh, of the north bank of the river quite controversial at the time, but they achieved it via this form. Uh, the um, the um, north elevation of the, of the east tower has a 14-metre uh, lean towards Collins Street. Um, and what, obviously the sky bridge, which is 10 storeys, as I mentioned. Uh, and then on the uh, western side, there's a receding facade as well, which is kind of chamfered all of which have an effect on the design. That's a cross-section through, uh, through the building of the uh, East Tower with the raking columns to achieve the, the lean. Uh, that puts thrust forces uh, in the top of the core um, and, and the overall stability system is affected by it. Uh, the terracing is achieved by um, what are basically up to three-storey columns transferring on big floor plates because we couldn't afford transfers um, at each level that would have killed the floor to floors in those regions or for those levels. Um, and the commercial tower, uh, this is just a cross section through the commercial tower, which shows the chamfering, which is achieved by a stepping 
column system. Again, the importance of that is that it puts thrust forces through all of these levels, which has an influence on the building movement of, the, of this tower, the commercial tower. Um, that's a, just an uh, image of the Revit model with the three cores, this commercial core, Reggie core, Hoka core, which drops off, and then uh, the high-rise residential core, which pokes up through the top. Um, so the Skybridge design brief, um, basically it was to have no movement joints in the facade because the architecture was to create this, this interesting form that was uninterrupted, um, uninterrupted and homogenous. Um, obviously needed to support a 10 level transfer structure. Um, linking the towers together to improve hotel and residential um, planning, which I'll explain later. Um, to restrict the movement of the Eastern Tower, because with, with its lean, uh, the Eastern Tower initially um, moved to the north of uh, around 160-odd uh, mil um, under gravity. Uh, and then also to, uh, part of the brief was to improve construction methodology flexibility, which I'll explain later. So the um, individual towers are linked versus, uh, um, or the towers linked versus unlinked. So uh, previously we um, designed both towers as I think most engineers would do, uh, independently um, to uh, enable total flexibility. The thought was CBUS the devel developer, if they chose to do one ahead of the other or the other didn't go ahead straight away, they had the opportunity to um, to um, just take one building up first. Um, secondly, it enabled the builder to build both um, at whatever accelerated program and then just link them together at, at the end. CBUS uh, um, told us basically not to worry about that constraint. Um, the building had to proceed in its entirety um, because it just wouldn't work commercially for them otherwise. Um, and uh, Multiplex were engaged in an ECI role, basically as a consultant to, pro to, pro to provide um, buildability advice, which was a luxury because we, um, we quickly realised that um, the Eastern Tower was not on the critical path above level 34, so it enabled us to make a couple of moves that improved the, the overall building design. And that was, we had with the, um, with the um, East Tower, two trailing uh, walls um, on the corridors um, and then uh, connecting to a, an east-west orientated shear wall and that improved the stability of the um, east tower by around 40% which meant the building could stand up on its own in its own right. We got rid of these, um, this shows the hotel floor but then as we go up uh, we clear a lot of these columns out and they've got greater flexibility to put the higher premium apartments it's all luxury, but at the top, the, um, there, there's basically um, much more freedom for them to put the uh, improved apartment planning. Um, so I'll explain the construction methodology constraints uh, later. Um, I'll talk about them now. Um, so the uh, so the Western Tower um, is uh, on the critical path, and it's to be constructed. Uh, to the roof as a priority. Uh, part of the reason is the commercial building obviously needs to, or the office building needs to be fitted out with all of the uh, independent tenancies going in. But secondly, and most importantly, all the plant sits on the top of the, this roof, or particularly the um, air handling units that serve the whole um, development. Um, secondly, um, as I mentioned, the East Tower the critical path is to build it to level 34 and then, the, and then the link becomes the next critical item. Beyond that, um, the structure can slow down on this side. So with that in mind, uh, we design that into the design and like I said, we, 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 re we reduce the stiffness of this building but we also improve the, the overall performance of the tower and, uh, and factored in this particular construction methodology with a little bit of redundancy to enable some flexibility uh, for multiplex as they build. And then the, um, the, the sky bridge goes in um, over a, uh, a period of time which um, 
they will, it's been forecast, they'll build this to level 36. And then um, this has to, the Skybridge has to be finished for them to continue beyond level 36. Um, also, uh, as I sort of touched on before, and part of the construction methodology and staging is that this building with its side core wants to move uh, west um, with uh, the majority of the load above level 34 being to the north and to the um, west. It also wants to move a bit to the north and uh, the raking columns that, uh, oh sorry, the um, stepped columns because of this chamfering facade causes a, a, an anti-clockwise rotation in this building. And the, uh, the 13 metre, 14 metre lean of the north tower causes this tower to want to uh, um, move north. Um, and uh, then obviously they've got the interesting bit of fitting this in between. And uh, this will be, you know, being constructed in steel will be done in a, uh, in a factory well before they know where the final position of the two towers are. Um, which I'll discuss shortly as well. So, um, so the uh, Skybridge structure design, we put a couple of options to the uh, builder multiplex um, and uh, one, th this is the one that was adopted. So it's a box truss, um, two and a half metres tall, one and a half metres wide, there's three of them. Um, uh, they are um, constructed in a way that enables them to minimise uh, temporary works um, and uh, the, the avoidance of a construction deck underneath. Uh, the uh, north truss is a planar truss simply because they, um, they put a pull through here that cut through our planar truss and, and I couldn't uh, convince them not to do it. So that's a little bit different. This is a bit hard to read, but this shows the details of the um, skybridge structure. This is an elevation. So the first thing they do is put these assemblies, uh, bolt them to the cores um, or concrete uh, columns on, on each side. Then, um, so there's a little platform built here for them to access and, and, and fix these off. But then the, um, this half of the truss, which is around 25 tonnes, is, um, is installed and spans from end to end. And, uh, and there's a little uh, handrail there and this is a walkway. So they've immediately got three, um, three walkways to uh, walk across the structure as soon as the the first three half trusses are built. That then enables them to build the second half of the, of the, um, of the box truss, um, fixing off these ends and these ends. Um, so we've avoided a temporary works. It also means um, eight, seven lifts to, um, to, to put the, the whole skybridge structure together. Um, this connection has been designed for all of those building movements we talked about I touched on before and I'll talk about more later. Um, the ceiling panel system uh, under the sky bridge, basically there's eight panels, they're prefabricated, they get lifted through the sky bridge structure and with uh, eight lifts the ceiling system and all the finishes are complete so, um, so hopefully that accelerates the whole sky bridge construction program. So now onto the design. Um, this is an idealised um, idealised planar truss, I guess, view. Um, essentially, as uh, this is the, um, the east tower core pushing to the, pushing to the north, this is rotating and pushing that way and that way, and this is kind of what we end up with as a, uh, an idealised uh, truss. You can recut this many other ways, but ultimately um, we've tested a few and uh, we're reinforcing it this way. Um, the forces are not that high. They're um, about 5,000 kilonewtons um, with uh, you know, compression uh, in the fat zones and these are tension ties. But also we can, if we decide to, utilise the, the trusses to tie the buildings together, which we haven't done at this stage. The reason is because we're, during construction, we're allowing the two buildings to move around a little bit and for them to have their tolerance and, and, and then lock them off. And then once the concrete has, uh, oops, yeah, the concrete has uh, gone off and achieved its strength, um, we'll then probably lock off the trusses as well. 
Um, so a little bit about the movement. So um, as I mentioned, uh, this, this, this building uh, and the construction methodology that goes with it. Um, so we've, uh, very early on in the piece, we identified all of these building movements and it was probably a year and a half ago and we mentioned it to the whole consultant team and said, this is what you have to put into your design so that we can make this thing work. And, uh, and um, that criteria was set in our design movement report and uh, we've reiterated it, it many times to the consultants, to the builder and now the subcontractors. So it's built into the, um, the methodology of, um, of construction, facades, uh, lift contractors, um, um, and obviously architecture in terms of finishes. And what it means is um, a number of things. Um, so firstly, uh, they have to build this to, at every three levels, they have to resurvey and build to design position um, because the buildings want to move. As I said, this wants to move 165 odd mil that way. At, the, at level 34, this wants to move about 50 mil that way. This actually wants to move 50 mil that way as well. So the sky bridge extends you know, about 100 mil in theory. But if they design, if they build to design position, that means that at every level, or every third level, they actually reset the building back to where it should be. So that theoretically means when they get to 34, it's in its design position. At level 20, when they built that at design position and continued to move up, it's now out of position 20 millimetres because of the loads that have been put on top of it. But we're okay with all of that and, um, and, and, uh, and it's all within the acceptable um, drift criteria, et cetera, for facade design and the rest of it. But more importantly, this is about how, how we make sure the sky bridge fits together and everything else. So, um, so when they get to 34, we're in our design position, but then they want to keep building to the top. So when they get to level 44, it's out of position. And, uh, and that's because it's continuing to lean to the, to the west and to the north. So we've, uh, that's factored into our design tolerances, construction tolerances, I should say. And multiplex are aware of what, uh, what they have to do and why it's critical they don't change the construction methodology without informing us first so we can feed it back into the design. Uh, this one here is far more flexible. Um, so when they get to level 34, it's theoretically in position. Um, and then um, when they build the next level up, it will move 15 mil to the north. When they build to 36, it'll go a further 20 mil, so it's 35 mil out. And that's why we said you've got to stop at 34, not only for strength, but because with the sky bridge loads being placed here and all of the, you know, this building at the top is only uh, this sort of size, all the weight is on the north end, it's exaggerating its, uh, its movement north. So, so that's, uh, that, that, that's the, the issue. And also, as I mentioned, this thing's uh, rotating in the anti-clockwise direction because of the thrust forces each time one of these levels is built. So, we, so this is the movement regime um, of, the, of this uh, western tower and this basically shows the, the core in the as-built, anticipated as-built position with the, with the corrections going on, which is the jump in the, in the curve uh, at every third level. And then, and then it continues to lean furthermore um, to the west, as I mentioned, after level 34 is built. This, this, further movement is its, its um, movement uh, as the floors above 34 are constructed. This is a little different because um, we're actually asking the, you can't see it on this, but the centre is here. We're actually asking Multiplex to preset the core to the south to make adjustments because it does move more um, so that we can get a, 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 a closer to verticality, I guess. Um, in the final condition, and then the lean that occurs afterwards. Um, and this is the deflected shape um, of, the, of the overall tower once it's, uh, once it's complete. Um, so the construction tolerances. Basically, um, we've advised the team uh, that uh, the commercial core um, lifts need to allow for a 50 mil movement to the west. Uh, the high rise 
residential core, which um, serves up to level 42, needs to allow for 80 millimetres of uh, movement to the west. The, um, oh, sorry, the residential core is preset 35 mil to the south, and then they need to allow for it to move back to its original position, or design position, and then 50 mil to the north. So that informs the lift contractors what tolerances they've got to allow for in the shafts. And also the, the builder knows why it's so important to, uh, to uh, um, continue to survey and build to position, design position. Um, this facade, so the, the northern facade of the, um, of the east tower could be up to 50 millimetres further north um, uh, at Skybridge level, and so the uh, design of the facade and tolerances to be able to marry the two facades in, because they'll come up independently and then need to match at Skybridge level, um, is built into the design of the facade. Uh, and finally, uh, 50 millimetres of tolerance along the Skybridge connection to the um, Western Tower to enable or to allow for the fact that the buildings are moving away from each other. So with, with all of that in mind, um, and, uh, and um, you know, everybody appreciating what we're trying to achieve right at the start of the project, uh, we think that we've um, helped to make this, uh, this project work and achieve, the, and achieve the architectural outcome, which was not to have um, you know, to have a homogenous uh, shape, uh, shape building. But also, um, this is all about construction. In the final condition, when the towers are uh, connected together, this thing hardly moves. It, by tying them together, it's an extremely stiff building. So, uh, so this is really all about um, uh, handling uh, all of the uh, nuances, I guess, uh, during construction.